Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while. Um, this is uh, V3000 Plus, the GGF edition. I'm sure you guys all saw the B-roll I just put up before this talk. I'm gonna quickly go over the mods I've made for this case, um, and overall my impressions of the case. So, this case uh, was done in collaboration with Stuart from GGF Events. Uh, you may know his channel on YouTube. He's probably one of the biggest water cooling channels. He does, he pumps out builds like crazy. And he's a very nice guy. And he had this case sent to me um, when he was first collaborating with Lian Lee to get it produced. Um, the only differences between this one and the standard V3000 is, of course, this is white and it comes with a badge that has his logo on the rear that is removable. Um, the case is extremely large. It is a bit heavy. It's about like, I want to say 70 pounds out, out the box. Um, so it's definitely, think of Case Labs, SMA8, that kind of style. You have loads of space. Um, this motherboard orientation, if anybody can figure out what I'm using to point <laughs> stuff with, props to you, okay? So this motherboard orientation is supported out the box. Uh, you can have it in the standard position as well. Um, this is just the rotated position. Um, I've covered up a lot of the panels in this case. So there's a lot of features like adding a secondary uh, ITX motherboard. Um, you can mount the GPU down here instead of a radiator if you have a second system that normally mounts right about here. Um, but you can watch Stuart's review for that. I'll link it in the description. He has a big video on all the possibilities and layouts. And he's done multiple builds in this case. And you can see them. So what I've done is my approach was I was gonna keep the motherboard in this rotated orientation. Uh, there is a grommet on the back, so you can run all the cables really easily. You don't need to struggle. Um, of course, it comes also with the vertical bracket in the box, so you could mount this like, you know, with the GPU facing towards you. I wanted to show off the bits power 4096 block on the front and the rear, which is why I've mounted it like this. Um, so my layout in this, in this build was, once I had this going, I realized I had this big empty space on the side. Uh, my pump is on the bottom. My distro is on the rear. Uh, this piece right here is simply because the distro with the cover I made for it is in totality about 21 millimeters thick. And this case frame is about 18 millimeters. So this is simply here to make it look cleaner when the case door is open. When the case door is closed, you don't see any of that, okay? So that's why this exists. Um, so in my design, where most people would put radiators here or you can put hard drives if you want, I decided to put a screen because I felt, I originally was gonna put two reservoirs there, but then I felt, you know, that doesn't, I might as well make use of the space. So this screen is a 10 inch HM Tech from Amazon. I'll put a link in it in the description. Um, it's a 1080p screen. You don't need anything more fancy than that for a 10 inch. It's running an ADA 64 sensor panel, okay? Um, that's why it looks like this. It's hooked up with a very short HDMI cable directly to the video card right here. And for those wondering how I mounted this screen is, when you buy these screens, they always come with, um, some smaller ones may have mounting tabs, but the larger ones tend to have mounts on the back. And what I made was I made in a, a kind of a, just a piece out of acrylic where I drilled holes to match the original mounting location. And then I stretched that to other holes where a 360 or 240, you know, 120 millimeter mount. Because normally in this position, you can also mount the side radiator, right? So I just, you know, I made a bracket with the holes being 105, 105 millimeters apart, which is, you know, fan distance. And then another set of holes to match the mount on the back of the monitor. And that allows for it to sit flush against the back. Now, when you, you'll notice that when you rotate this motherboard, it's also the motherboard, um, the motherboard, what's it, back plate for the motherboard and the mainboard tray, it sticks out at about five millimeters, okay? 
more, a little more than five. And with the screen recessed and then this plastic cover that I made around the motherboard, um, which I measured, you know, every single one by like, you know, I designed these for the cables to go through. So for example, like 12 millimeters up, all of this I cut on my CNC. It's a lot easier than doing it by hand. I've done it by hand before. It's a pain in the ass. On the CNC, it's so much easier. And I actually fucked this up a couple times and I had to remake it like three, four times uh, to get it exactly the way I wanted. Um, and then this purple thing right here is another acrylic cover that I made uh, just to give it a little bit of balance on the purple and a little bit of design, otherwise just a big blank white slate. Um, this right here is actually inlaid mirror acrylic. It's not a sticker. Um, the way I did that was obviously I pocketed the acrylic 1.5 millimeters in, and then I put in a 1.5 millimeter thick acrylic, uh, you know, raw letters. Um, if you sp this is actually mirror acrylic, but you'll notice it's not reflecting. If you spray like mirror acrylic with some type of like satin clear coat or that frosted glass clear coat paint, um, not clear coat, but like frosted glass paint they sell at Home Depot, it pretty much knocks out the reflection, but it still gives you that nice kind of metal looking, glass looking, chrome looking look. So, but you, but you lose the reflection, which is helpful for photography for when you're taking photos of it and just generally pleasing because you don't want it reflecting everything else, right? Uh, the bottom is just another piece that I cut. I put two pass-throughs to go to the radiator and the pump at the bottom. And the rear, kind of hard to see from this angle. Um, the rear, I'm trying to rotate it over here. Sorry, guys. You can see that. This case is really heavy right now and I don't even want to try moving it. But, um, okay. So the way I have the, obviously it comes to the bottom goes into the CPU, comes out the CPU, goes into the GPU, comes out the GPU, goes into the top rack. Okay, so that's, that's the loop order I got going on. Uh, in terms of the loop itself, I have three, three 480s, <clears throat> one at the top, one at the front, one at the bottom. Uh, the fans for the front are in the front. I originally had considered putting them here, but because I just did, everybody else did that, and I didn't want to do that. So that's why they're in the front. Okay, um, let's see what else. Um, the BIS Power logo on the rear here, that is also an inlay that is not a sticker. Uh, and I learned a lot about, it's really hard to cut small pieces on a CNC. Uh, laser cutters definitely worked out, worked out better for that. Um, let's see what else here I can think of. Um, yeah, pretty much custom distro on the back, made all the covers. Oh, uh, one more thing about the front. So this grill cover is also designed by me. Uh, this is actually aluminum inlay inside the Lanley logo. Um, looking back, I could have done probably acrylic would have been easier than cutting aluminum for it. But um, I wanted something that was just better than the generic kind of radiator covers you can buy on Etsy or whatever. Um, so that, that's the whole thing behind that. Um, yeah, I mean, one more thing. Oh, this motherboard, uh, this is a Z790 Extreme. Uh, it's not an Apex. <laughs> I had some people ask if it was an Apex. Um, it is a Z790 Extreme. Uh, they don't come in white. Uh, I painted this myself. Uh, if you're gonna paint this motherboard or most of Seuss boards that are the Extreme, uh, they, are, they do have mostly aluminum. Like this is all anodized aluminum. So is this. Um, some of it is not anodized. It really depends on the part but most of them are anodized aluminum and you can strip that with like drain cleaner or any type of caustic acid. Um, but you will definitely want to strip it and then paint over it. So obviously strip, primer, paint, right? And that's how I got this to be white uh, to kind of keep the, with the design because the, the original one, it's, it's black. It's like, uh, you know, it's anodized black, uh, sorry, anodized aluminum that's black with silver stripes that they kept like, raw to give that you know completed raw guy uh, it's also along with the letters they used to be silver which is pretty much the raw aluminum uh, so what i've done was i took paint pens and i just filled it in myself by hand uh, to kind of complete that design and that's how i've managed to keep the look and it, i i want to i want to say it looks stock uh, it doesn't look like a modified board but it is a modified board um, for those that want to, don't understand what I mean by the raw aluminum, if you look at the Z790 Apex, 
That is before they anodize it. So pretty much they clear coated or something to that extent of those aluminum pieces. And that's why the Z790 Apex looks the way it does. If you strip almost all the ASUS boards, they will look like that. Okay. Um, but let's see. So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up for the overall on this build here. Uh, about the performance of the Strix block, um, not amazing. Uh, kind of on par with the EK one. Uh, so you're looking about, um, you see idle's great, but you know, my, my water temp is 30, the GPU is about 29. It's probably just a margin of error, but um, under load, it's like, you know, Delta's pretty like 25 to 30, not great. You know, it is what it is. Um, I don't believe there's a contact issue, um, but it, you know, that, I mean, it's, it, I think so far the best 4090 blocks have been the Heat Killer and the Optimus, which is not surprising. Um, but with that said, oh, for those wondering, this is a cable mod 180 degree adapter. I uh, use this, I mean, I couldn't get the cable to the front and close the glass. I just thought this looked cleaner. And that's pretty much it. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up for this build. Uh, my next build will be in Eliani Odyssey, which I got a long time ago. I already painted it, but you know, I haven't figured out the insides yet. But obviously I'm gonna take advantage of having a CNC and work on it. Uh, so there will be some custom made things for that as well. Um, with that said, this was a fun build to do. Uh, this is a great case for people who like big cases. If you're into big cases, this is definitely a case for you. Um, you can, you know, 3480 is more than enough. You can actually have four, I think. I think if you have this in the standard position, you can put another one over here on the mid, mid plate and you have four 480s, which is like total overkill. Um, but yeah, so thanks again to, you know, Lian Lee for sending out the case and they also gave me the fans, which was nice. Um, Asus sent the motherboard out to me this time. So thanks to them for giving me something I can void warranty on and not feel bad. Uh, this power, you know, as usual, always sends out the goodies if I asked for it. So big thanks to them. And cable mod, you know, saves you from making cables. But yeah, with that said, uh, if you have any questions, put it in the bottom. I try to answer them. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.